Hello, happy new year. I hope you had an amazing festive period. We had a great time. It was super relaxing, ate far too much. Now I'm the size of a whale, standard. I spent a little bit of time sort of rearranging this space a little bit, not too much, not too much. And I really like it. I want to do more work here. So I'm not gonna properly show you just yet because um, I want to do a bit more work. We've got like a, it's like above above my head, we want to put this big circular shelving unit that Colin got from work. So we want to put that up there. I'm a little bit afraid to put it up there because if it falls and hits my Mac, I will cry. <laughs> so I'm kind of in two minds about whether I want to put it there, but I think it'll look really cute. But definitely, when I'm done decorating this area, I really want to show you what it looks like because I really like it so far. This video is going to be, I don't want to say New Year's resolutions because that sounds a bit negative. It's going to be more of like a 2021 hopes and dreams video because it's going to be about what I would really like to achieve in 2021. I'm also going to do a little bit of reflecting on 2020, even though 2020 was a really rubbish year for everyone. Like, I mean, literally, grating your skin off while shaving your legs. Crap year. Like, it was just, just horrendous. Just really, really bad. Even though it was such a terrible year, um, I did achieve quite a lot weirdly and it was very productive for me so I do want to reflect back on you know just things to be thankful for for the past year which I think is important for everyone because I'm sure no matter what happened to you even if you had a real real bad time I'm sure you can think of one or two things that were good about this year about 2020. So yeah so I'm probably just gonna play some footage of me painting or something over the top of me talking so you have something to look at you don't have to look at that. You can have me playing in the background while you do something else. Why don't you do your own 2021 hopes and dreams alongside me? We can do it together. And then in the comments, you can let me know what your hopes and dreams are because I love reading that kind of thing. But yeah, without further ado, let's get to it. Okay, so the first thing I wanna do is basically just a little bit of reflection on 2020. Like I said, it was horrific. It was horrendous. I don't think anyone was expecting it to go the way it went. However, 2020 for me was weirdly and unexpectedly and just insanely the most productive year I've ever had probably in my entire life. And I'm including like college and university where I was churning out work. And I don't know if it was sort of the impending doom <laughs> the anxiety that just made me work my little bum off but something just I don't know just gave me a bit of a kick up the bum and I ended up opening my Etsy shop starting this YouTube channel I was pretty damn consistent with drawing almost every day and uploading to Instagram at least I want to say I do like four times a week even though last year was so terrible I really want if you're watching this I want you to join me in trying to think of just a few things that you're thankful for or that you achieved last year even if it's just like you got out of bed even if it's like there were days where you didn't want to do anything you didn't want to shower but you did even if it's just you know um, you created one thing through the whole year. If you created one thing through the whole year, that is enough to be thankful for and enough to be, you know, to give yourself a little bit of a pat on the back. So yeah, so there's a, a fair few things that, I'm, that I managed to achieve in 2020 and a fair few things that I'm proud of. And what I will say is even though it was my most productive year, that it was actually one of the most stressful and not just because of COVID, I think I stressed myself out because there were a lot of times when I did force myself to work when I, d I knew I probably shouldn't and I knew I probably should have taken a break. And I'm not gonna lie, I probably had burnout five times this year just with trying to get things sorted for shop updates for trying to get vlogs out on time for trying to finish work to post on instagram so although 
it was really productive and I am really proud of it and I do think that's an achievement. I do want to point out that to an extent it wasn't really sustainable and I'm gonna get into my 2021 goals on that um, in a minute but I don't think I can carry on the same way that I did last year because I am tired all the time. <laughs> so I definitely want to re-evaluate my work ethic for 2021 because I do think that I got a little bit toxic towards myself and yeah that's not good you should you should you know if you're doing art on the side it should be something that you do because you're enjoying it and not something that you're kind of having to force yourself to do because otherwise what's the point so that's 2020 out of the way next I want to get on to the coming year 2021 and what I want to achieve my goals etc 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 now, if you're doing this alongside me, I just want to say that any goals <laughs> you come up with, make sure they're realistic, make sure that they're things that you actually think you can do. So don't be like, I want to post to Instagram every day, if at the minute you literally only have time to post to Instagram once a week, because that's not going to help you. That's just, you're just going to fail and it's going to make you feel bad. So definitely keep your goals realistic, keep them manageable and don't do too many because I've seen people before who have like a list of like 15 things <laughs> that they want to accomplish and I'm like how, how much time do you think there is in a day honey like come now come now so these are mine number one I really want to work on my hand lettering skills and also my typography skills because I'm terrible at it my handwriting itself is not that bad but whenever i try to like do an illustration with a bit of like hand lettering on it in my handwriting it looks awful so i would really like to i don't know i don't know if i might sign up to skillshare or something and do a few courses on that or just like sort of research it myself or see if there's something on youtube that i can use because i love hand lettering and i love the way people use hand lettering in like YouTube thumbnails and like Instagram stories and like Etsy listings and stuff. I'd love to try that, but I'm terrible at it. So I just never do. I'm just not using Jill Sands because that's my typeface. So that's the first thing that I want to do. And I think I'll probably work on that pretty casually. Like I don't want to be like the best hand letterer ever by the end of 2021, but I would like to be better than I am now so even if I do like a sketchbook session like once a week that's better than nothing um I want to decorate the studio more so I want to have it and I feel like this is probably only going to be fully achievable if I can get back into the office of my day job but I really want this space to be more aesthetic but also just more of a place where I look forward to coming to and I think that's why I'm not going to be able to achieve it until I go back into the office of my day job because at the minute it's where I do my nine to five graphic design job and <laughs> some mornings I don't want to come in here because <laughs> I want to stay in bed and I don't I don't like that feeling because before I started working from home this was like my safe space this was my sanctuary and i loved coming into this room and that's changed a lot so but i want to get more shelves up i want to get some more plants in here i want to get some more color in here I might paint the wall colin probably won't want me to paint the wall but i might paint the wall when he's not here i might do it so yeah my third thing is that i would love to buy more art which is related to the decorating the studio thing but also not only buy more art but i would I really want to sign up to another artist Patreon because they look so fun and whenever I see people's vlogs and they're getting like stuff in they're getting like Patreon parcels it looks so cool and I want to be a part of that and also one day I want to set up my own Patreon so it's probably a good idea to sign up to some other people's um, and see what they do so yeah so that's what I like to do and also I feel like I don't support other artists enough I feel like I'm always like, look at my stuff, buy my stuff, and I don't support my peers enough. And that's really important to support your peers. And because that's the way that you like build relationships as well, because I don't have many artist friends and I would love to make more artist friends. 
So maybe that's another goal is I'd like to be more a part of the community because I really don't have any friends. So the fourth thing is that I'd really like to keep creating art consistently. I don't think I want to create art more often than I do now, but I definitely want to keep creating art consistently. I think consistently is the thing. Like if you're only uploading three times a week, but you always upload three times a week and you and it's always good and you're always uploading on the same days, I feel like that's way more valuable than some weeks you upload every day and it's kind of spotty quality and other weeks you upload once. So yeah, I'd like to keep doing it consistently. However, however, again, my fifth thing is I need to rest more. I need to put less pressure on myself because what I find, and I feel like a lot of people do this, is I'll do a shop update I'll absolutely kill myself over the shop update. I'll work all hours of the day and night. I won't spend any time with Colin. I won't be sleeping properly because I'll be worrying about it. I'll get to the shop update or the I'll put the vlog out or put the thing onto Instagram or whatever it is that I'm doing. I'll work myself to the bone at. And then I'll just sit and look at the stats. I'll just sit and look at the traffic on my Etsy shop or I'll sit and look at the views on YouTube or I'll see how many people have liked the thing that I put on Instagram and and it's just it's just it's so unhealthy not only to push yourself that hard in the first place now I I do believe that you should work hard I think you should always work hard for what you want but there is a limit and I think I often forget that I work full time because you see other people on YouTube or on Instagram and they're full-time artists so they're like pumping out all this artwork and then I'm trying to like keep up to that level of stuff when eight hours of the day I'm working for another company. <laughs> so I literally only have the evenings and weekends and I also have a boyfriend who is lovely and I love spending time with. So <laughs> yeah, so this goal is twofold it's to rest more to spend more time with Colin to not put so much pressure on myself give myself more time to do things but also to not sweat the stats so much because and like I said I think a lot of artists do this we really 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 concern ourselves with how many views we're getting on YouTube how many likes we're getting on Instagram how many sales we're getting on Etsy and it I get sales on Etsy is important when that's your only income, but really we're, we're all making art because we love it. We're not making art because it makes money, because <laughs> it doesn't really. <laughs> I really want to get to the point where I'm just making art because I enjoy it rather than making art because I think, oh, this will get a lot of likes on Instagram because at, at the end of the day, it's just Instagram, like who cares? And recently I've had this, I mean, this is a whole different topic really, but I'll sort of talk about it a little bit. Recently I've had this thing with Instagram where, whether it's the algorithm or what, I don't know, but it's, I'm getting less likes, I'm getting less engagement, dropping followers. And it's, it was getting, really getting me down. And then I, I was like, well, why? Who cares? It doesn't really matter at the end of the day. So yeah, I think I just want to get into more of a, a headspace where I really enjoy what I'm doing and if it's not popular or if it doesn't make any money, don't bloody matter. Because <laughs> it doesn't. So yeah, so those are my goals for next year. I am really hoping that 2021 is going to be much more cheerful. I'm hoping that Covid isn't going to be around for much longer because I don't know about you, but I'm freaking sick of it. We have got a vaccine now, so that's a step in the right direction, but I have an awful feeling that it's still gonna be around like this time next year. Yeah, hopefully I can get back into the office with my day job and keep this space for myself. I think that'll probably make me feel a lot better. But yeah, that's it. I hope you've enjoyed listening to me ramble on about my hopes and dreams for next year. <laughs> This is going to be really interesting to watch in a year's time to see <laughs> when I'm like, oh, I always still worked myself to death this year. Good job, me. 
I'm just kind of honestly I'm just kind of like that. I'm a bit of a workaholic it, it is an issue I hope you come up with some lovely goals and hopes and dreams yourself um, I hope you found some things to be thankful for for 2020 some things to keep you motivated I am feeling super motivated especially now I've tidied up and stuff I would highly recommend if you're feeling a bit meh with your workspace tidy it give it a deep clean shuffle it around a little bit it'll feel like a brand new place honestly promise let me know in the comments what your new year goals are what your hopes and dreams are for 2021 i would love to read them because i am very very nosy yeah thank you for watching give a thumbs up if you liked it give a thumbs up if you didn't like it give a thumbs up anyway check me out on instagram check me out on etsy check me out everywhere i started a tiktok now i don't know how that's gonna work out um but you know all the kids have been doing it for a year so i thought i might as well <laughs> jump on the bandwagon a year later but yeah that's it for me i'll see you in the next one and i hope you have a great week until then bye